Great shot with the Tiger getting a two for one. Actually, three models dead, I think, with that shot. Oh my god, that was an amazing shot! Hello everyone, this is GrayShot17, bringing you another CH2 replay. This is a 2v2 on Road to Kharkov. We got two Vermach 2 Soviets. We got Posa, Lars, Hustler, and Watt. Double check their ranks real quick. Uh, one of these guys submitted a replay to GrayShotProductionsGmail.com, and now I'm hosting it. So if you would like me to host your replay, uh, send it to GrayShotProductionsGmail.com. Uh, you know, just just do that, and I'm, I, I, I may actually cast it. But in any case, um, we also, a few other things... Uh, if you look at some of the links down below, you can support the channel. Make sure you hit that like subscribe button on YouTube if you have not done so already. Uh, for other things, again, I have a Patreon you can support me at. Uh, I have a Twitch as well. You can check me out. It's live streaming co for, uh, multiple times a week and all sorts of other stuff. But in any case, uh, yes, that's my sponsorship shout out, whatever you want to call it. Now let's get to the actual game. Uh, already I see a big WTF moment because we have Lars... And Posa going with Spearhead Doctrine. Now, I am typically fine with, uh, you know, the, the similar doctrines, but not the exact same one doctrines. I know Assault Support's really similar to this one as well, but dear lord. Come on, separate it. Uh, Combat Engineers keeping the Grand Deers away. Very, very nice. We have in mid, Pioneers moving on in. We got a Scout Car moving on in as well. I'm assuming what they're trying to do is kind of move in for their flanking maneuver. But, eh, so far it's going okay. We got Grand Ears over here just chilling. They're not taking the point, but they're not really doing all that much. MG's opening fire. Scout car could advance with the penals in them and try to get around the MG, but with the Grand Ears there, not going to happen. Just It's just going to be held back. Now, in any capacity, we have, uh, yeah, penals being pushed back because they got suppressed. This is, is a negative cover. Flank could be possible through this side. Uh, Panzerfaust not done. Actually, being pulled back. Um, we got, uh, Pioneers on the, on the retreat from that MG over there. Uh, other Engineer squads over there as well. But no, it thinks, it seems to, things, uh, seem to have calmed down a little bit. Um, Soviets haven't picked anything yet. Uh, we have the new Doctrine over here, which I, I'm assuming he might go, but, um... If they don't, that'll be hilarious, because the last one of these I featured had, like, four Tiger Aces of the new variety. So if we get no, like, big, um, uh, new commanders, that would be actually quite hilarious. But, because everyone seems to be going them. Everyone seems to. But anyway, uh, over here doesn't seem that it's affecting all that much. We have multiple, uh, MGs moving up, uh, Penals moving in. We got Flamethrowers on said Scout Car, uh, so we can easily see the Scout Car move in, try to burn him alive. Grandier's over here and over here, so a Panzerfaust is possible. Oh, I'm sorry, there's even a squad over here. So yeah, Lars is going a lot with a lot of Grenadier. Same thing with Pulsa. Pulsa is pushing far left, but again, with those MGs possibly moving over, or at least if they did move over, that would be a big issue. Um, looks like they're pulling back. They have a mortar, which is most likely doing said, uh, the reason why they pull back. Uh, scout car is moving on in. We can see a flanking maneuver once again. Uh, get in the building, maybe? Gonna get in the building? No, you're not gonna get in the building. Okay, that's fine. Uh, right now, again, victory point seems to be the main draw point of this map because, honestly, most of the, the, like, the stuff you have on each other's side is pretty well defended. You have, like, one or two, like, points that are extremely close to the front. You have to worry about guarding. But overall, resource-wise, I assume it's gonna be incredibly similar throughout this game. The big thing is, that I, are, is either side gonna build caches? I don't expect them, like, here, because it's so close to the front. But, like, here? Absolutely. Here? Yes. And I'm absolutely here, because that's, like, the main crit point. This point and this point, if you decapped, cuts off a large portion of the map. So you want to make sure that is well protected. Now, it looks like the, Ger the Germans have been pushed back in this sector. Penals and flamethrowers pushing them out of it and uh, forcing them back pretty damn far. So, very nice job. Very nice job indeed. Uh, with those forces pushed back, most likely what we could end up seeing is, uh, well, okay, we can see a regrouped German front. Uh, maybe with scout car? Possibly? Hold on. No scout car ability here. Pulsa doesn't have that either. Because usually I could see that uh, scout car to counteract with the auto tur auto uh, 
yeah, it's, it's not auto turret, but it's um, it's uh, it, it's gun to that shreds light armor pretty easily to auto cannon. There we go. To just uh, tear that apart. Nice Panzer Faust will stop that thing's advance, but the flamethrower unit is just causing hell. And I love also he has a minesweeper just in case the Germans are like, let's build mi mines just to hold that armor back. He's like, nah, that's not working. So Lars seems to be bringing up a mortar half track. I don't know if that's the best thing, but it is good to have a mortar. So okay, I mean you could absolutely use its incendiary ability to burn the enemy, but you don't exactly have a lot of munitions. Neither German player does. Uh, the ally is doing pretty well overall in terms of uh, population as well. It looks like the Soviets are pushing over here as well. So the Germans are on the back foot. It seems like they're the ones that are currently losing this early game fight. They're 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 sticking out for long. We can see that they did put down some munitions. So it's like they they see themselves coming back. Now, we do have multiple troops coming on in. Uh, the Pioneers will probably be unable to hold this front for too for too long. Yeah, they're not going to cap it. There's an MG here, but it's in. It's not in the best cover. I think being on this side of the fence would have been a little bit better. Flamethrower unit coming on in. Oh, God. Well, this is going to be interesting. So, yeah, burns down and takes out the uh, MG. Well, the engineer squad is desperately trying to get the hold of that MG. And with it... Oh, shit. Hold on. Where the hell am I looking? Oh, okay, retreat. I was looking that way. But nice job. Grab the MG and managed to steal an MG-42 from the Germans. Also throw a penal on that munition cache I just, uh, I, I just not gloated about, but what I was appreciate. I appreciated the long-term thinking of the Germans. Unfortunately, if you can't protect it, it doesn't matter what, what kind of seeds you plant, that hurricane will wash it away if not properly, uh, properly dug in there. Oh boy. Anyway, mortar half track just lighting up this area. This mortar will be a little bit harder to counter. Uh, this one simply because of the fact that this one's armored, so it doesn't matter how many hits this one does. This one it will be a lot easier for. We can see here that Pulsa is also deployed a mortar half track. So their idea is to just mortar out war, not out mortar, but outlast the enemy mortars and just cause havoc. This will break up the Allied front line and cause hell. Uh, which should slow their advance. I don't know if it's going to stop their advance. Fair uh, reasoning would be the fact that the Allies have been doing pretty well at pushing back the Germans. And the Germans uh, also have... Well... I was going to say they don't have a great fighting force. But he's slowly upgrading it. He can come back. What has finally picked something? He went mechanized support tactics. Now this is good. I like this. Because he went with penals and guards. The guards will, and with DPs, which are amazing against infantry. So these guys are just going to come in here and just start wrecking these pioneers. But the guards can hold back the grenadiers while the penals hold back armor. And while the guards are good against armor, the penals can, uh, and also can pin armor, the penals then can again, uh, close the gap, throw the satchel, and really uh, just cause hell for said armor. Also, if he pushes here with a good AT front, he could actually knock out a lot of these mortar half tracks. Meanwhile, we haven't really looked at Pulsa too much. He is pushing back the conscripts. It managed to take some key territory on the left-hand side. Good for him. Lars is managing to recap a lot of territory on right and slowly advancing. We'll see how well that is. I don't think this... Well, actually, no. He's fighting two uh, different, I guess, forces. So, uh, yeah, that's fine. I, th I, I think that's okay. Um, oh, great hit. Great hit. Half track is currently hitting this. We have a rifle grenade. They're just trying to blow up this goddamn building. And you know what? It's slowly but surely they're going to get through it, I think. But good Axis counterattack. I'm actually surprised there's no real Soviet defense on left. I guess he moved them all to mid. And they're just being slowly mortared out. A lot of the MGs had to fall back. Conscripts are back at base. Um, he's building the... Oh, God. Okay, so he has a light... Oh, it's essentially the light mechanized building. That He'll get a T-70. Have the Germans built the light mechanized yet uh not really they haven't built anything yet they haven't even upgraded yet okay so with the tankovia battalion you could easily see light armor like a half track t70 being deployed su 76 i don't know if that's good in this scenario except for the t70 or maybe the half track half track's pretty cheap i like how they made it cheaper to make it easier to use um that could it's flak gun especially because you guys have a lot of munitions could be very good at holding back a lot of the infantry groups kind of moving through especially since you have at guns already placed uh you don't necessarily need something to fight the light armor though the t70 could also sneak around and knock out these half tracks if done correctly but you have to watch out for a lot of the grand ears because he has so many grand ears and now panzer grand ears that any light armor you need to keep your distance 
Um, simply because of the fact that the, it can be shredded by Panzerfaust or Panzer Shrex. Uh, I don't expect the Axes to use a lot of them, but they, you, that is something you have to watch out for. And while I can see the munitions of the Axes, the Allies can't. So they don't know that the, that the Axes are currently starving for munitions like Germany was for oil back in World War II. So good push, and actually good kill right there. Managed to kill a unit. They still grab the MG42 though, so that does kind of suck. Mortar is still causing hell. Jesus Christ. Mortar half tracks get doing work. Helping turn the tide quite effectively. Anyway, uh, Conscript's moving on in. Throwing a nice Molotov cocktail right on the Grand Ears. They seem to be barbecuing themselves. I guess they don't mind. Um, meanwhile, Lars is pushing up with a right hand uh, sweep. With a lot of these Grand Ears trying to capture that much needed territory and resources. They're a little bit. They're either at par or beating the Allies, but. Um, they're also doing that because also they have a lot of the caches down as well, which is definitely helping. Well, the allies, I don't see any caches. They don't. Um, so that will start being a bit of a detriment to their faction or to their side if they can't really, uh, you know, get more resources for the long-term engagement. T-70 trying to pop shots, but just not doing a much to that Grand Ear squad. It's still holding in. The other Grand Ear squad is firing another Panzerfaust. He needs two more. He doesn't exactly have the munitions to do that, or the additional men, or the health. So yeah, that T-70 is going to make it out just fine. Meanwhile, we have uh, guards taking back the right-hand point. AT gun watching this one. We still have... We don't have anything really guarding... This mortar half track, and okay, he knows this, so he's pulling on back. Smart. Pan's Grand Ears grabbing mid. We saw this MG though, and now it looks like that um, Hustla is actually sending over a lot of his forces on left. He did build, by the way, the mechanized armor compania, so we can actually upgrade his conscripts, the seven man conscripts, plus with his. Uh, okay, so we got advanced warfare. This is good. I don't think it's great, but it's good. Um, oh, wow. Wait, 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 wait. Conscript repair kit. Can conscripts can repair damage structure, vehicle, or bridge? Oh, so they can now repair any. Oh, okay. I don't know if that's always been. I thought it was only vehicles, but that's cool. Um, good. But again, they get PPSHs as well, so you could do the mobilized reserves and maybe. I wonder if you could do like one conscript assault package, like they, one of them gets PPSH or something, because this would be two of their rifles. Uh, just, uh, just curious. Because I haven't seen what exactly this, like, the new ability would do with that. I've seen it with more of the PTR, was it, the, uh, shoot, the, the, the thing you can drop to pick up. You can't do that because it's two rifle, or three rifles, I think. Good kill, though. And now there's nothing stopping it from moving on in to kill this, uh, order half-track. God damn it. The dead T-70's like, you've been the bane of my existence for the past ten minutes. You shall die. Finally. Oh, wow, he used smoke. Uh, armor-piercing rounds. He's switching. He might be able to do it. Uh, armor-piercing rounds on target. He's going back into the smoke. Dude, the smoke won't last forever, and it's not lasting right now. Uh, maybe not. Jumping back into the smoke would have been better. Uh, T-70 did take a lot of hell, so that those armor-piercing rounds did actually do quite a bit of damage toward it. So, very nice job. Um, at least, you know, hurting it. You just need to kill it with a Grenadier squad with a Panzerfaust, which looks like these guys are like, payback, motherfucker. Uh, it's gonna be about... Oh, what more Panzer... No, he's gonna need two. I, I think he'll need another one. Anyway, a lot of Axis forces kind of... Oh, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, pushing in while the Allies are trying to hold over in this sector. They have an MG facing the wrong direction. Might need to replace it. Uh, Panzerfaust, likely. Uh, low on health, not likely anymore. Nope, not going to be able to do it. Get the fuck out of there. Uh, Panzer Grenadier is also pulling on back. And overall, while allies uh, got pushed back a little bit, they're more contracting more than actually losing. So that's good. Any case, uh, yeah, Grenadier is just holding the line. Or trying to, anyway, against the Penals. Penals should win that fight. They will. Uh, we still have... Oh, wow. Okay, so we got a scout card. Okay. Okay, so we went light. The light mechanized Campania has been made. Uh, Pulsa has also made that. Do they have AT? They have a pack gun. Or he has pack gun. And you have the Panzer Grenadiers. But you don't have any pack guns yourself. Alright, that could be an issue. I mean, to be fair, we can see Hustler has gotten a lot of support. Not a lot of front lines. It's good. It's helping hold the line. But unfortunately, when something comes in to really counteract that support, he doesn't have anything to fill in the gaps. And that's why he keeps falling on back. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Watt actually has a 
more, I guess, assault. Well, no, he has a decent amount of support. Although, Flamethrower kind of makes that more offensive than defensive. Um, T70 is doing a lot of work as well. So, he's been doing good at holding his side. Unfortunately, Pulsa is doing a fantastic job at now breaking down um, Hustler's forces. Hustler still trying to guard mid, but not guarding that left-hand side. It's going to leave him open to a flank. T70 now repositioning to try to fight them. We do have some mines down the place, so they can't push up too much. Although, that is... I don't know. Some of those mines are. I don't. I. I. It's uh, unless there's a chase. I don't think it'll be likely for that to be really effective against the Germans. Now, uh, T3485, better variant than the 76 moving in. Gonna get the kill on that Grenadier squad. Second Grenadier squad down, and Pulsa lost two Grenadiers. That's pretty damn big. That's gonna stop his. Uh, can we lose three? He's gonna lose three Grenadiers. God damn. Black day for the German army. Holy crap. Yeah, so he just lost all most of his frontline capabilities, uh, or like assault, so he's going to play very defensive for the time being. Pack gun's moving up, half track's still there, but this thing could do circles around. We do have a Panzer IV being made by Pulsa, and Lars is uh, yet to really go anything lo uh, for the long term. I'm assuming what he might be doing is saving up for a Tiger, but yeah, he only needs 13 command points for it. Okay, uh, T-34, 85 pulling on back we got guards and uh holding mid with their dps and doing a damn good job even though they're lower oh good grenade uh oh no he thought he was gonna move up damn it i thought he was gonna move up all right but grandier is still being pushed back and these guard troops <laughs> doing work and shredding them at gun still on standby probably should camouflage to make sure they're not a target uh, we still have the mortar half track back here in a scout car that needs repairs. He doesn't have a pioneer squad, and unfortunately, uh, without an OKW, there's no bases for it. So he's gonna have to just hang back and chill. Uh, so we actually have no new doctrines. I'm actually really surprised on that. I th I really thought there would be a new doctrine in this game, but I guess not. Okay. Well, I mean that's kind of nice. Let me go back to the classic. I mean, literally, it's a Vermont for Soviet, so it literally it is. Uh, T3045 looking for some repairs. Uh, you know, conscripts, you can repair him. You know that, right? You don't have to. All right, I guess we'll just have the engineer squad do it. Uh, you figure the conscripts might be a little more effective. Uh, Panzer IV opening fire now against these guys. Flame half track coming on in. He does have an AT grenade though, so say goodbye to this thing. Uh, no, he doesn't throw it. I'm actually surprised. I saw the click saying he was going to do it, but I guess he did. Grenadier's opening fire. No cover, though, so even though the conscripts are a little weaker, they're... Oh, sorry. Not a little weaker. They have the upgrade for additional man, and also they have vet three. Uh, they're doing one. They're doing very well for themselves. Armor has to pull back. No infantry support to speak of to continue the assault, and yeah, he's going to have to chill out for a little while. Meanwhile, Lars, once again, I truly think he's saving up for a tiger. And I don't think that's going to be as big of a threat as some might have. I know the Tiger Ace is currently scarring people online. But this is just a base Tiger. And this base Tiger, um, for reference, um, has to contend with the marked vehicle, which will bring it down to medium armor. So, that T-3045 could actually hold off a Tiger for a decent time. Possibly kill it if well supported, because it is weaker and easier to pen. We have a scout car and Gradius trying to shred. Mortar even trying to shred that penal. I'm sorry, but god damn, that penal will not budge. Meanwhile, T3045 coming around the flank, but Pan's Gradius coming on in. Great grenade pushing them back. And yeah, T3045 has to be, uh, you know, fall back a little bit. Scout car opening fire from distance. Another grenade. Another attempt. Does get a model kill and pushes Pan's Gradius back. So that's going to stop any, uh, well, detriment to the... T-34, once it's healed and moves back up, it's like, huh, you have no AT. All right, I can fight you. Even this Panzer IV, very low on health. Uh, that that 85, oh, nice kill, though, on the penal. Um, sorry, the guard. But if that 85 comes around, it could do some serious damage to this. So he has to watch out. Tiger has been deployed and moving on up right behind that Panzer IV. This thing is slowly being healed. Uh, what currently is an SU-85 being made. So he's pretty good against, with, against any armored unit on the field. Uh, but meanwhile, we do have a Tiger, and it's only 20 minutes, so unfortunately not breaking the record that a Tiger Ace would, but it, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, Tiger opening fire, getting some nice shots on the conscripts. AT gun, though, keeping it back. Uh, Grandiers charging forward. If they can knock out the AT gun, that Tiger could move up. And, oh, looks like Tiger's moving up with it. Again, hit it. Great shot, trying to push it back. Tiger 
aiming now for the 85. Would have been better to hit it with the Tiger, then Pounzer Faust, and so they actually get the damage engine. Meanwhile, this Tiger is being pushed back by a Sturmavik Strike, which is coming on in uh, on that side. Oh no, they're actually hitting the armor. Oh, I'm sorry, it was a, it was a strafe. It's not two, it's just one. Panzer IV lead, helping lead the charge. There's an AT gun still there, actually, on the side. Plus, uh, but yeah, this Tiger's moving on through, pushing back the MG. And with Grandiers pushing, helping push back the infantry. This thing is still shooting you in your ass. You may want to move. Yeah, he's like, okay, I'll fall back. That's a good idea, especially with the penal and guards troops moving on in. Um, S85 as well moving on in. Oh! Oh, it's like, he's like trying to... <laughs> Trying to uh, swerve, like, uh, yeah, dodge the shots, please. Dodge the shots, especially with the rear. Great shot with the Tiger, getting a two for one. Actually, three models dead, I think, with that shot. Oh, my God, that was an amazing shot. Oh, wow. Tiger can get some pretty amazing shots now and again. Yeah, I know a lot of people say direct fire, but sometimes he, I'm, I'm assuming he did direct fire. He don't need to, and by God, he just annihilated that card force. Oh, uh, he was in medium cover, too. Oh, those, those poor guards. Meanwhile, the Soviets taking a lot of casualties from those hits. Uh, managed to retake mid, though, and have all three victory points. So they're now going to put the clock down on the Germans. But the Germans have a bigger army. And to be fair, I think they're in a better I mean, slightly bigger. But um, I think they're in a better position to take back territory. Panzergrinder is moving on to this. S-85 doesn't really have a counter to it. Good hits. Pushing back the S-85. Grandier is coming in as long as the side. Gra uh, again, these should focus on this guy because they're point like directly in front. Now he's doing a smart thing. He's like, okay, Panzer Grandiers need to actually stop moving to fire, so I'll just keep ramming into it. Now it does fire another shot, it does a little bit of damage. We do have an SU85, oh, well, two SU85s to hold back the Tiger. Conscripts running on in. We can see a bunch of AT grenades being thrown. Great shot once again. Holy God, this Tiger is just doing a lot of work. Now he needs smoke. Yep, there he goes. He drops smoke so we can get the hell out of there. Uh, unfortunately, he needs something to also hold back all the armor. Luckily, Panzerfaust doing that. He actually might get a kill on that one. Direct fire by the SU-85, I think, is happening. This thing needs to pull back. We have a T-3045 that could be taken. Oh, my God. Panzerfaust be fired at. And we have another uh, strafe coming in. Coming out in the back. Panzer IV moving in. It actually gets a kill on the SU-85. Other SU-85 moving in, though. The Axis armor barely hanging in there. And we have an IO-2 bomb strike coming in to finish off the Tiger. Very nice play there. Again, Prometheus effect. Don't run in a straight line. Turn left or turn right. But don't run in an exact straight line while something perfectly straight is coming at you. It's, it's, it, if, I'm sorry. If you have ever seen in movies that effect where someone's running and they're being chased by something that really has no, like, it doesn't have a mind of its own or anything. So literally, it's just falling in a straight line. But if you go 10 feet to the right or left, you're fine. It, but again, it's like because they keep running straight, they eventually die or they barely outrun it. Which it's like, just head down the side corner. You'd be okay. Jesus Christ. Um, Megamind is another one where he has the bike and he's going down the street. What if he just turned right and go down? It's only a building. It's a building length. You could easily take a right down the street, but it, I don't know. I always, I always find that stuff interesting. Yeah. Also, I fully expected that to have a better finishing fight, but hey, what, whatever. At least Godzilla King of the Monsters gave me that. Oh, yeah, I still think it's a good movie. Ah, uh, but in any case, looks like in mid that T-3045 was taken back by the Soviets and tried to be healed, but Panzer IV is having none of it and helping to kill it are these grenadiers all fed three by the way give credit where credit dude lars has some really good grenadiers really fucking good grenadiers actually with a lot of kills against the soviet soviet still has his three star conscripts but he definitely needs better infantry poor what has just been a, has lost a lot of his forces artillery coming in from the at gun trying to push him off mid right now again it's the ally the axis are losing this the allies are putting a lot of pressure on the axis so very nice job in that regard Great ears moving on up. Going to try to use long range push back the guards. Again, 2v1. Definitely a bad fight for them. You definitely want to... Uh... Well, actually, no. This guy's not engaging. Never mind. It's just one-on-one. -on -one. Um, neither in cover. All right. Could have been moved him into cover. Uh, meanwhile, we have uh, Pulsa on left. 
Uh, okay, he has more troops now, so at least he can have more men to actually push on his front with. Um, Soviet's kind of bare bones right now in terms of, like, any any defenses on left. Honestly, there's not even mines over here. This Panzer IV is just going deep and hard by enemy lines. Recon's being deployed to try to find something. Flanking the AT gun, again, that's a perfect... I mean, Panzer IV can do quite a bit against the AT gun from behind. And, yeah, the S-85 is coming around, but I assume... Uh, okay, maybe the assumption was not clear. Maybe move up the pack to, the, you know, to, uh, button it and then eventually kill it with the Panzer IV. That could be something. Grandiers, though, coming into support. And also hiding around here. He can move up to Panzerfaust. He is moving up to Panzerfaust it. So now the Soviets are about to... Yep, he's gonna have some issues. So Panzerfaust coming in. It, S-85 is pretty much stuck. Panzergrandier is coming in on the flank. Getting some great hits on this thing. One more volley and the S-85 is done for. Panzer IV realizing how the opportunity is at hand. Goes in for the long shot. Barrel protects the S-85, but Panzergrandier is... Put it out of its poor misery. AT gun has been neutralized. Conscripts moving on in. One squad going for the AT gun. Makes sense. Again, with seven models, you can put three in the AT gun. Still a four-man squad. Still pretty effective, at, especially if at three. Uh, MG trying to hold back the infantry. Looks like some of it's retreating. Conscripts trying to move up and try to hold back the remainder. We have what? Trying desperately to hold left. But it looks like a lot of his troops are falling on back. Man, Germans had one hell of a comeback. Unfortunately, a lot of that had to do with a Tiger. And that's no longer on the field. Lars doesn't have any armor, but he, I'm assuming he's going to save up for it. This T-3045 is just ha taking a lot of hits. When people say, Grey Shot, why did you put the T-3485 so low? This is the exact reason. While technically, it, yes, it can be very good for some purposes. Like, the Tiger was like, as you saw, like, one-shotting infantry. The, the guards, I mean, yes, they, it, it, like, it got, it killed some Grenadiers, but that was more just... A weak grenadiers and it like yeah it yeah it, it's it's just being supported by other stuff so yeah that's just kind of the reason why it's like I I don't think it's quite there for being as high as it should be um, oh and the is2 god damn a lot of you guys did not like that we put the is2 lower than a Pershing in terms of uh, like again uh, overall like effectiveness but I don't know I like I said I, I, I don't really care much for the is2 um, it's good. It's it's it, it, again. It like again. We put it at a good like a good spot. We didn't put it as a terrible spot. It, it's just we find other heavy tanks to be better for how much resource that it is for. In any case, Penal's trying to move in. Actually, managing to push back the Grand Deer squad more likely because of the MG right there, which by the way is an MG42. Still remember that thing that was still at the beginning of the map? Well, what still has it? And uh, hopefully, you can use it quite well. T3485 coming in. Panzer IV and them exchanging fire, but. Uh, Panzer Faust being shot, pinning it. Panzer IV, though, getting, uh, escaping. Double pack guarding it, though. One pack gun moving on up. Could be very bad for the C-3045 to stick around, so he should pull back. Again, right now we have Lars coming in with a lot of infantry. A lot of, uh, Grandiers and Panzer Grandiers, so any armor or infantry is gonna have a hell of a field day. Luckily, the MG suppressing. It's an MG-42, so it shall. Guard troops trying to push on in, but Grandiers shredding them. Good grenade, though. Could squad wipe it. Very close to... Uh, Grandier still opening fire, holding the line against the other squad. Scout car pulling on back. Grandier's, Pan's Grandier, sorry, um, had to fall back because of the MG suppressing it. Guard troops being supported by the flamethrower and uh, holding the line just barely. Now, without really anything stopping them, they should be able to take this left side. Middle, though, is being taken by the Grandier squad. The T-34-85, once again healed, and once again Panzerfausted. This thing is like, stop destroying my engine, for the love of God. I keep repairing it. This is like the fifth time he's had his engine repaired. Uh, it's, it, yeah, it's bad. Anyway, uh, the Sully pulling on back. Pack gun misses, and luckily it should be able to escape. Lo nice shot with that this gun managing to get a nice shot on the Panzer IV. Conscripts moving on in. They're trying to repair it way too close to the front line. AT gun being, uh, sorry, AT grenade being thrown. Penal's uh, Pioneers uh, pulling on back. No AT grenade, okay. Pioneers, I guess, moved up to try to counter. Oh, shit. Frag bomb coming in. Great hit hitting the MG and the AT gun. Decrewing one, heavily wounding the other. Mortar almost finished it. And a lot of what's forces are on the retreat. And we can see he needs a lot of manpower to get all of his forces back up to full health, but he doesn't have it right now. He simply does not. Um, so, what to do? 
Well, it's while while his troop he's gonna have to fall back because he doesn't have the men because they're not healed. A lot of his troops are slowly being healed, but it's gonna take a while for him to get the manpower to heal them. So Lars is gonna move up now. Luckily, he has an IC152, which by the way, once he get the C3485, it's like get the fuck out of my way. I got damage engine again. I need to heal. Damn, that thing can't go like five seconds without a damage engine. Anyway, uh, IC152 very good against infantry and armor. Has explosive rounds, so definitely more in infantry. Uh, or anti-infantry component uh, at this moment. Uh, managing to push back some of the troops or the Grandiers. Again, this guy still has a ton of really highly vetted Grandiers. So, all for Lars. He's doing amazing in the infantry game. Pulse is doing well. He has Grandiers, but not as highly vetted. He keeps kind of losing them. The Panzer IVs, this thing is doing extremely well. Lars, I'm assuming, might try to save up for a Tiger. He's very close to it. He, within a minute, he could probably deploy it. And honestly, I think he should. The ISU-152 is a major threat, and it, without him, oh, with him only having infantry, th this thing is literally a counter to all of his infantry and all of his very highly vetted infantry uh, that he's been deploying over the course of the game. Nice shot pushing them back. Penal's managing to take the spot. T-3045, now without a damage engine, finally moving on in and capturing the victory point. Um, uh, meanwhile, oh wow, you actually made, I thought, I thought one by one made dinner. Uh, what was that then? Oh, okay. Well, thank you. It smells delicious. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Ace, uh, one of the, my awesome partners on the channel, uh, made dinner. And look at that. That looks scrumptious, doesn't it? I, I think that looks pretty good. Anyway, so uh, yeah, he made that. And yes, I do have flowers on my plates. Uh, it was uh, a gift. Any case. MG suppressing them, ISU 152, finally putting an end to that mortar half track. Oh boy, Pack Gun though opening fire, helping guard the flank. I don't know how long it's gonna help hold. He is switching to, oh no, he's switching armor piercing. Tiger tank though moving on in. Oh boy, we're getting a classic fight. A tiger versus an ISU 152. Two sword enemies on both sides. Meanwhile, we have German forces lining up to launch an attack. Soviet forces kind of regrouping. I think he pulled his troops back, but he needs to move it up. Germans winning so far this engagement. Grenadiers are pushing back the infantry, the engineers, uh, the guards and penals trying to hold with an MG far, far back and make sure they start suppressing if they hit. Bouncing the ICU 152 shot. T 3045 moving on in against Panzer IV. Better gun though overall, but Panzer Grenadiers coming in to help turn the tide. Doing very well. Conscripts, a lot of conscripts moving on in. Tiger Tank too, taking too many hits from assuming the AT gun and the ICU 152, but falling back. Uh, after dealing severe damage to the enemy. Panzer IV moving up for a kill, but remember the T-3045 is still something to watch out for. Conscripts doing a mass blitz in an effort to try and kill that Panzer IV, but Panzer IV is like having none of it and just getting the hell out of there and getting back to its defensive line. I think they have the scout car still here just for sight on this and also to shoot down any planes that come in, I'm assuming. Tiger tank, oh my God, now Pulse has a tiger tank. Oh boy, two tigers, one ISU, who's gonna win? Uh, well, that MG apparently is going to win because it, it managed to dodge that shot even though it can't move. Okay, only one man died. That man was off in the corner, so that's cool. Uh, managed to take mid, though, so the Germans are doing a decent job in that regard. Having a more of a defensive line against slowly healing their Tigers. Soviet forces need to collect and heal. Luckily, it looks like what was able to do that. Most of his forces are now moving back up. And meanwhile, Hustler is in a... He needs to heal his armor still, but his infantry is at least fine. The, luck of, the nice thing is he's using his conscripts to heal, so they're quickly healing all the T-34s uh, very quickly to get them back up on the front. So while the Germans are winning this right now and actually taking the lead for the first time in this game, I believe, um, it, it, it's nice to see that uh, the Soviets are not out of the woods yet. The Germans have a larger army by far, but if used correctly, I think the Soviets may have a chance here. But again, they have to use it correctly, like penal. The, oh, that night they mark target. They mark target the tiger. Meanwhile, the uh, other tiger decides to come in. They button it as well. I assume five two. Dot. Oh wow. Okay, missing the shot there. Uh, this could be a great place for a frag bomb. Coming in, dropping smoke for the ram. Gets the satchel as well. Oh my god. Once again, damage engine. But that's of his own accord. God damn it. Uh. Anyway, tiger tank. Gonna, oh, I'm sorry. Pack gun gonna knock that thing out. Oh, shoot, IC-152 getting a great shot on that Tiger. Uh, Pack Gun, again, kind of... Wow, is he going to really shoot that? No, he's... No, he's going to die from it. 
and both tigers die. Where the hell was your Panzer IV and additional arm infantry support? You're fighting two guys over here, and you just sent a, a, a you just sent your tiger tank. God damn! I would have sent your infantry and armor to support, but damn, good counterattack by the Soviets. Axe is pushing up a little too much. Uh, that unfortunately only brought the Axis equal grounds to the Soviets. But it looks like the Soviets are using this momentum to turn uh, to turn this tide and push in. Now, the Germans still have the victory points, so if a firm defense of those victory points could help them win. Grandiers, for some Oh my god, Panzer Grandiers were doing work. He they're trying to shoot him. Oh go! Go, 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 go! Go! Panzerfaust is being shot! And it kills the IC-152. None of the heavy tanks survived to see the end of the game. But, uh, yeah. Uh, hey, I mean, good for them. I mean, the, it, the Germans did actually inflict some massive casualties against the Soviets, so. Good for, I mean, good for the infantry counterattack, but he did lose a lot of his vetted forces, including his Panzer Grandiers. He's not getting out Tiger anytime soon. Posa might. He, he, he has a decent amount of manpower and fuel reserve, so we could easily deploy a Tiger sooner than later. Uh, once again, uh, oh, god damn. T3485 is like, no more Panzerfaust! No more! I'm tired of having a destroyed engine. <laughs> anyway, uh, Pack Gun and Panzer IV doing a decent amount of damage. Uh, MG Armor Piercing Grounds as well could help. Um, Panzer IV Vet 3. Damn it! It's going toe to toe with an 85. Pack Gun as well providing support. One last shot gets the kill. And great counterattack by Pulsa. Doing a damn good job in this later half. Now get the hell out of there, man, before this SU 85 and AT gun snipe you from afar. Um. Oh, very, he, I think that was more of a direct shot, but yeah, that missed. Uh, Pack Gun needs a little bit of health. Tiger, a new Tiger's been deployed. IEC-152 could have been deployed shortly as well, but looks like what? Uh, did take some losses with its engineers. His penals and guards, though, are doing decently well, although penals are notorious, especially with their PTR's rifles, for being less effective against armor because of that, and so a lot of times you think they're pushovers, but they can still hold their own. They're not great, but they can, they can hold territory. Um... Again, you gotta sacrifice them. Okay, carry the heavy cover. Nice. I don't know why they got stuck there, but okay. Tiger coming in just saying F no and shuts down those uh, penals. And again, Tiger just firing from a distance. There, my, my, my thought process is the fact that they know if they can... Oh, frag bomb's coming in. Oh, say goodbye. It's coming in from this area. Inbound! Oh, wow. Hurts the MG. Doesn't kill it, but hurts it. Uh, guard troops coming on in, very good close range, and just shredding a lot of the penal troops. Grenade going out, gonna hurt the. Oh no, he actually got out of there. He gets the kill on them. AT straight, I'm oh, sorry, AT strafe. Uh, cervix strafe coming in. They're doing actually a decent amount of damage against the mortar half track, but not killing it. Very close. Great ears need to take this point. Uh, uh, Pan's great ears, sorry. Great ears are also taking this most likely to just keep pressure. And keep the Soviets away while the Panzergrandiers, which are half dead, by the way, uh, try to take that point. We do have conscripts moving on in. The Tiger is vulnerable to an AT grenade for a pinned engine, which could be vulnerable for an IS for an IL-2 bomb strike. But it looks like the SU-85 is simply going to come in. And, uh, yeah, he needs to move over his Panzer IV now to support. This Tiger is undefended as hell and needs some additional support to take this side. Honestly, an attack in... Well, no, he is an MG admin. Never mind. No, I take that back. Attack over here, like with a scout, uh, maybe not scout car, but like a minesweeper squad and stuff like that to come over on this flank could do a ton of damage versing this stuff. But I, they're very, very desperately trying to take on this point so they can win the game. Both sides are dead even. And right now the allies are, they got the victory points. So they're going to hold. This guy's just trying to hold his ground and doing so okay. Damn, good shot with the IC-152 pushing those Grand Ears back. He's still has a lot of his Grand Ears, though. This one actually picked up the Panzer Strike from the previous Grand Ear, Panzer Grand Ear squad, which not going to do a ton of damage. Wow, okay, that did nothing. Panzer IV coming over to fight off an IC-152. I give credit where credit's due. They're trying their very damn best job at it. But fortunately, we see the German army is significantly smaller. And with the IC-152 there, this Panzer IV, nice idea. Drop the smoke so you can capture it without this thing literally murdering your men. Um, unfortunately, he's still gonna murder by just direct firing. Good shot with the Panzer IV, but the last gets AT grenaded, and I think the S-25 and stuff are gonna kill it. Yeah, it's the fallback. They're gonna try to take mid, but just walking up with an MG is fruitless. You're not gonna be able to cap it. And there goes Lars. He's been replaced by an AI, and 
yep, that's gonna be it for this game. He rage quit, I assume, because he's like, I can't, we can't win this fight. Uh, again, the Germans had a hell of a comeback. I just think the acts, the like, I just think the Allies did a better job of coordinating um, a little bit more. Even though the, they, it seemed like, okay, even though it seemed like the uh, Axis were coordinating because the double Tiger moving on in, the the uh, Pulsa did held back a lot of his reserves and just kind of sat on the left side. If he would have moved up the Panzer IV and stuff a little bit earlier, or called an additional recon or I don't know, uh, did did something more because he had no infantry in the game when when literally two armies were moving on those two tigers. That would have really helped out. And I think what might have saved one or even both of them, honestly. So I don't know, like calling it a frag bomb when they were rushing up the conscripts or something along those lines, like stopping a lot of the support equipment. Uh, let's see damage wise, but thank you what for swinging this replay you and hustler did fantastic again You might have had a bad like mid game, but you guys came around the last uh, the last third um, Again very close on damage, but you edged out on both that in kills again took a lot of losses But hey, you're Soviet it you know kind of happens Lars ton of kills again Lars on his infantry game was fantastic his armor game was more, a little bit more mixed But his infantry game with the Panzer Grenadiers were amazing really enjoyed that fight so uh yeah, also, Posa did very well as, uh, again, with his stuff. Maybe not as good as Lars with the infantry, but still pretty good. I, th I think Posa had better armor engagements overall. Um, Lars might have done a little bit more damage uh, with his Panzer Grenadiers, but I honestly, honestly think that, um, yeah, his Grenadiers did nearly 20,000 damage by themselves. Holy crap. Uh, that's just first thing. Yeah, I'm assuming Panzer Fausting. Oh, God, there's poor T 3045s. But in any case, um, that's going to be game. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, make sure you submit your replays. And uh, check out, you know, I hit the sub button if you want to check out more content on Grayshot Productions. But in any case, it's been Grayshot17. I'll see you all next time. Hello, everyone. I want to give a special shout out to Patreon supporters Malam, Ace, Chris Bailey, Javi, Jovo, Joey240, Josh, JP Val, Junior Chicklis, Little Koosh, Moustache, Only Play Apples, Pyroshock, Rifle, Sebastian Marzlik, Sergeant McPain, Streaking Wookie, White Hot D, GTA, Jacob Oswai, Nathan Angus, and of course Tim. Thank you guys so much for your amazing support. This has been Grayshot17 and my amazing patrons, and I'll see you guys next time.